we shall commence this module by discussing about the monetary approach. The monetary approach was developed in 1950s and 60s by the International Monetary Fund's research department under Jackals J. Pollock and by Harry G. Johnson, Robert A. Mundell and their students at the University of Chicago. The basic premise of the monetary approach is that the balance of payments is essentially a monetary phenomena. The very concept of a balance of payment implies the existence of money. As one writer puts it, indeed it would be impossible to have a balance of payment surplus or deficit in a barter economy. This being the case, any attempt to explain the concept of balance of payments must naturally focus on the demand for and supply of the money commodity. The monetary approach consists in the severe delineation of the consequences of this ordinary yet influential insight for the analysis of BOP disequilibrium, adjustment and policy. Disequilibrium in BOP refers to a situation where the credit that is receipts and debit that is payment side are not equal that is either the credit side beats the debit side or the debit side beats the credit side. Thus disequilibrium in the BOP signifies an imbalance in its debit and credit sides. The monetary approach to the BOP explains the elimination of payment disequilibrium in terms of factors bringing the supply and demand for money into equality. It considers the supply of money to be endogenous by assuming a feedback from the balance of payments through changes in international reserves to the changes in the monetary liabilities of the central bank and government. One of the important questions of the monetary policy is the extent to which the monetary authority of an open economy can affect the price level or the other arguments of the demand for money such as the level of real output and interest rate. If it were the case then these were not be changed then any increase in monetary liabilities of the authority would be met by an equal and offsetting outflow of international reserves or an equi-proportionate rise in the price of domestic goods and foreign exchange and one would have to argue that monetary policy had no influence on the real responses of the system. We argue that monetary policy will have real effects since it results into the changes in relative prices like fall or rise in the price of non-traded or domestic goods relative to the world prices in an either fixed or flexible exchange rates regime. Thus the effectiveness of monetary policy in an open economy may depend on the existence of a group of commodities whose relative prices can be influenced by domestic conditions of demand and supply. After studying this module, you shall be able to abreast yourself with the monetary approach to balance of payments, abreast yourself with the monetary approach to the exchange rates. Let us now understand the basic assumptions of monetary approach to the balance of payment. As in the case of the demand supply model, the monetary approach to BOP that is MBOP has its own assumptions. First, law of one price. MBOP assumes that the identical goods being sold in different countries bear the same price after accounting for transport cost. Second, perfect substitution in both product as well as capital markets. The MBOP assumes that there is a perfect substitution in both the product and the capital markets. Due to this, the low of one price and a single interest rate prevail across various countries. Third, exogenous level of output. The level of output of a country is assumed exogenous. Fourth, full employment. 
all the countries of the world are assumed to be operating at full employment level. It is also assumed that wage prices are flexible due to which the output gets fixed at full employment level. Fifth, no sterilization. The approach assumes that the sterilization of currency flow is not possible under a fixed exchange rate regime since the law of one price prevails globally. Sixth, demand for money. It has been assumed that the money demand is a stock concept and is a stable function of income, prices and interest rates. Seventh, supply of money. The supply of money is a function of monetary base which includes domestic credit and the country's foreign exchange reserves. Eighth, international investor behavior. The most important characteristic of the MBOP is its exclusive focus on the behavior of international investors. The MBOP considers an international investor who is to decide between securities denominated in two different currencies. Therefore, it is not surprising that the MBOP is also called the asset approach to exchange rate determination. Ninth, changes in real return. The term monetary in the MBOP emphasizes the relevance of the changes in the monetary policy and the resulting changes in the real returns on securities denominated in different currencies. After investors observe these changes in real returns, they express their preferences for a security which leads to buying or selling of certain currencies and therefore changes in the exchange rate. Moving on to discuss the model. Given these assumptions, the monetary approach can be expressed in the form of the following relationship between the demand for and supply of money. The demand for money is given by MD is a stable function of income that is Y, prices that is P and the rate of interest that is I. Therefore, MD is equals to a function of Y comma P comma I. This is given as equation 1. The money supply that is MS is a multiple of money base that is M which consists of domestic money D and the country's foreign exchange reserves that is R. Ignoring small m for simplicity which is a constant we can say that ms is equals to D plus R. This is given as equation 2. Since in equilibrium the demand for money equals to the supply of money therefore MD is equals to ms which is equation 3 and therefore we can say that MD which is equals to D plus R as MS is equals to D plus R. This is given as equation 4. A balance of payment deficit or surplus is represented by the changes in the country's foreign exchange reserves. Thus, a change in R is equals to change in MD minus change in D. This is given as equation 5 or change in R is equals to B which is given as equation 6. Here B represents the balance of payments which is equals to the difference between the change in demand for money and the change in the domestic credit. A balance of payment deficit means a negative B which reduces R and money supply. On the other hand a surplus means a positive B which increases R and the money supply. When B is equals to O, it means BOP equilibrium or no disequilibrium of BOP. The automatic adjustment mechanism in the monetary approaches is explained under both the fixed and the flexible exchange rate systems. Under the fixed exchange rate system, assume that MD is equals to MS so that BOP or capital B is zero. Now suppose the monetary authority increases the domestic money supply with no change in the demand for money. As a result, MS will be greater than MD and there will be a BOP deficit. People who have larger cash balances increase their purchases 
to buy more foreign goods and securities. This tends to raise their prices and increase imports of goods and foreign assets. This leads to an increase in expenditure on both current and capital accounts in BOP, thereby creating a BOP deficit. To maintain a fixed exchange rate, the monetary authority will have to sell foreign exchange reserves and buy domestic currency. Thus, the outflow of foreign exchange reserves means a fall in capital R and in domestic money supply. This process will continue until MS is equals to MD and there will again be the BOP equilibrium. On the other hand, if MS is less than MD at the given exchange rate, there will be a BOP surplus. Consequently, people acquire the domestic currency by selling goods and securities to foreigners. They will also seek to acquire additional money balances by restricting their expenditure relatively to their income. The monetary authority on its part will buy excess foreign currency in exchange for domestic currency. There will be inflow of foreign exchange reserves and increase in domestic money supply. This process will continue until MS is equals to MD and BOP equilibrium will again be restored. Thus, a BOP deficit or surplus is a temporary phenomena and is self-correcting or automatic in the long run. This is explained in figure. In panel A of the figure, MD is the stable money demand curve and MS is the money supply curve. The horizontal line M, D represents the money base or monetary base which is a multiple of domestic credit T which is also constant. This is the domestic component of the money supply that is why the MS curve starts from point C. MS and MD curve intersect at point E where the country's balance of payment is in equilibrium and its foreign exchange reserves are OR. In panel B of the figure PDC is the payments disequilibrium curve which is drawn as the vertical difference between MS and MD curves of panel A. As such, point B0 in panel B corresponds to point E in panel A where there is no disequilibrium of balance of payment. If MS will be less than MD, there is BOP surplus of SP in panel A. It leads to the inflow of foreign exchange reserves which rise from OR1 to OR and increase the money supply so as to bring BOP equilibrium at point E. On the other hand, if MS is greater than MD, there is a deficit in the BOP equals to DF. There is outflow of foreign exchange reserves which decline from OR2 to OR and reduce the money supply so as to re-establish the BOP equilibrium at point E. The same process is illustrated in panel B of the figure where BOP disequilibrium is self-correcting or automatic when B1 S1 surplus and B2 D1 deficit are equal. Under a system of flexible exchange rate, when B is equals to O, there is no change in foreign exchange reserves, that is R. But when there is a BOP deficit or surplus, changes in the demand for money and exchange rates play a major role in the adjustment process without any inflow or outflow of foreign exchange reserves. Suppose the monetary authority increases the money supply and there is a BOP deficit. People having additional cash balances buy more goods, thereby raising the price of domestic and imported goods. There is depreciation of the domestic currency and a rise in the exchange rate. The rise in the price in turn increases the demand for money, thereby bringing the equality of MD and MS without any outflow of foreign exchange reserves. The opposite will happen when MD will be greater than MS, there will be a fall in prices and appreciation of the domestic currency which automatically eliminates the excess demand for money. The exchange rate falls until MD is equals to MS and BOP is in equilibrium without any inflow of foreign exchange reserves. Next. We shall discuss about the criticism of the monetary approach to BOP. 
the monetary approach to the balance of payments has been criticized on the following grounds. First, demand for money not stable. Critics do not agree with the assumption of stable demand for money. The demand for money is stable in a long term but not in the short term when it shows less stability. Second, full employment is not possible. Similarly, the assumption of full employment is not acceptable because there exists involuntary unemployment in countries. Third, one price law is invalid. The view of the approach that law of one price holds for identical goods sold is invalid. This is because when factors of productions are drawn into sectors producing non-trading goods, the excess demand for non-traded goods will spill over into reduced supplies of traded goods. This will lead to increase in imports and disturb the law of one price for all traded goods. Fourth, market imperfections. There are also market imperfections which prevent the law of one price from working properly in many markets for traded goods. There may be price differentials due to the lack of information about overseas prices and trade regulations faced by traders. Fifth, sterilization not possible. The assumption that the sterilization of currency flows is not possible under fixed exchange rates has not been accepted by critics. They argue that the sterilization of currency flows is completely possible if the private sector is willing to adjust the composition of its wealth portfolio with regard to the relative importance of bonds and money balances or if the public sector is prepared to run a higher budget deficit whenever it has a balance of payment deficit with which to contend. Sixth, link between BOP and money supply is not valid. The monetary approach is based upon the direct link between BOP of a country and its total money supply. This has been questioned by many economists. The link between the two depends upon the ability of the monetary authorities to neutralize the inflows and outflows of foreign exchange reserves in case of BOP deficit and surplus. This requires some degree of sterilization of external flows, but this is not possible due to globalization of financial markets. 7. Neglects short run. The monetary approach is related to self-correcting long-run equilibrium in BOP. This is unrealistic since it fails to describe the short run through which the economy passes to reach the new equilibrium. As pointed out by Professor Croce, the monetary approach concentration on the long run assumes away all the problems that make the balance of payments a problem. Eighth, neglects other factors. This approach neglects all the real and structural factors which lead to disequilibrium in BOP and concentrates only on the domestic credit. Ninth, neglects the economic policy. This approach puts emphasis on the role of domestic credit in bringing BOP equilibrium and neglects the economic policy measures. According to Professor Curie, the BOP equilibrium can also be achieved by expenditure switching policies working through the real flows and government budget. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. The monetary approach to the balance of payment is an explanation of the overall balance of payments. It explains the changes in balance of payments in terms of the demand for and supply of money. According to this approach, a balance of payment deficit is always and everywhere a monetary phenomena. Therefore, it can only be corrected by monetary measures. Despite the criticism, the monetary approach is realistic in that it takes into consideration both domestic money and foreign money. 
focus is not on relative price changes but on the extent to which the demand for real money balances will be satisfied from internal sources through surplus or deficit in the BOP. A BOP deficit or surplus can be corrected through the changes in money supply and their consequent effects on income and expenditure or more generally on production and consumption of goods.